wait for the bus. <laughs> Sometimes this is a bus stop in Montreal, in Montreal in summer. It's a very strange bus stop because it's made of swing, and those are specific swings. It's musical swing. Each time you swing, you create one sound. And if you coordinate yourself with your neighbors, you can even create a melody. And you know what? When you swing, in general, you need your two hands so you don't have your smartphone, which means that you can communicate with another human being. The first point that we like when we use gamification is to transform a constraint into an opportunity. When you wait for the bus, maybe you feel that you are losing time. Maybe, in fact, it's a possibility for you to create social interaction. Who likes <laughs> to clean the windows? Oh, we have someone. But there are a lot of windows and mirrors here. Washing the windows can be considered as something very functional, maybe boring, technical, not very enthusiastic. Those people are window washers. This specific day, they, dis they disguise themselves into superheroes because they are cleaning the window of a very specific building. It's a kid's hospital. And for this specific day, of course, they have a functional task, and you can be sure that the windows will be clean. But their main mission will be to bring a sense of magic for someone who is suffering. So what we like when we use gamification is to create positive emotions. And it works only because you have several human beings, not just someone alone in front of a device. Who likes to throw the bin out? <laughs> this is a bin in Luzerne, in Switzerland. Maybe the country where they don't need this because it's so clean. <laughs> the idea behind this uh, object is that when you do a task, it's the last matter that counts to finish this task. Think about the last email that, that you haven't sent tonight. <laughs> Think about your PowerPoint presentation, which is not done tonight. And we procrastinate until tomorrow. So we are going to use gamification to make people start a task, continue a task, and finish a task in three different cases. When it's too complex, I feel I cannot do this. When it's too boring, yes, I can do this, but why? <laughs> or when it seems so easy that you will do it later, which means never. <laughs> In fact, we use gamification to have another channel to address certain difficulties, certain challenges. We use another channel than this one, the cognitive channel we considered in game design that we are facing, you know, this cognitive overload, too much information. Visual information, audio information, too much information. So each time we have to deal with a new one, we just get bored. We need to use another channel. The channel. <laughs> of emotions. Using these emotion channels, what we are going to do is to address your motivation, to encourage you to deal with this complex, boring, or too easy task. To do this in game design, we are um, using seven, at least seven game mechanisms, seven motivation mechanisms. For example, competition, or collaboration, curiosity, or um, 
personal development. And by using the different motivation, we activate your emotion. When we activate your emotion, we encourage you to enter in what we call a magic circle. When you enter in this magic circle, it could be in a virtual world using a VR cask. It could be using strange Lego bricks. But when you enter this magic circle, you feel protected. So if you feel protected, you can try and fail and try again and explore. If we come back in the world of education, what does it represent? For example, we introduce a media. Could be high tech, could be low tech, but we introduce an object, okay? This is one century ago. It's the drum tutor from Dr. Presse. This machine is a quiz machine. The basic uh, function is that um, someone is asking you a range of questions. To answer this question, you take a piece of paper, you do small holes in it, and then you introduce this in the quiz machine, you have a feedback. Okay. As a learner, as a student, if you want to improve yourself, you have to train and train again and train again, because you know what? The machine, which is different from the teacher, never get bored. Once, <laughs> twice, 100 times, it can provide you a feedback. And you know what? Using this, you are going to explore the possibility of not losing faith. You can experiment this strange answer. You you don't dare to do this out loud, but maybe with this media, you can test. And for us, as teachers, you know what? We are going to share the responsibility of the lecture with the students. For the moment, I have 100% of the responsibility of this session because I'm talking alone. As soon as I introduce a media, an interaction, you are taking your part. You are getting committed to this. Hopefully, life is much more complex than a quiz. So when we create game, we don't want to create behaviorist game saying, do you have a question? We have a perfect answer. No, we would like to create games to allow empower students to explore the complexity. This is an example of MIT simulators which were developed in the 40s. At the beginning, when we have developed simulators, it was to train pilots. So the idea beyond that is that you have a lot of different information, a lot. You will have to define which information you take and which scenario you are going to choose. And each scenario will have advantages and disadvantages. You will have a dilemma. If there is no dilemma, there is no game, you just have a quiz, that's it. So we would like to create games to empower students and learners to practice, to understand, to explore the complexity of their environment. I'm a teacher, so you have to imagine that each time that I enter in a room and, in, and when in this room there is more than 10 people, I'm going to do two things. The first thing is I'm going to check the attendance list to see who's there. And the second thing is to evaluate. Because maybe kids and students are evaluated, but we are as teachers, evaluated each time we enter into a room with more than 10 people. Who are we evaluated? So those are key um, performance indicators that we can use to evaluate a training program 
using games. In this training program, you use a game, so maybe you can have those key performance indicators. So you have reaction, the satisfaction of the learners. Are they happy, excited, committed? Learning, is their theoretical level better after the lecture than before, and we hope. Doing, can they transfer what they have learned into a practical session? Results, do you, can you, in your school, with your colleagues, in higher education, in a business school, and so on, can you have advantages from launching this type of innovative tool? For example, alignment in your practice, better internal communication, better outcomes, rewards, awards, press release, a certain image, and so on. And return on investment. Can you reduce the cost, improve your efficiency, and so on. Um, what we have observed with game is that when you use games, in fact, it increases a lot the satisfaction. It increases the, the theoretical level, but not that much compared to a classical tool or innovative pedagogy. But it increases a lot the practical things. People manipulate much more the concept and are much more familiar with this, which means that they can do it in a real case situation. When you, in your school, launch this strategy, you can have strong organizational benefits, like a transformative approach of your organization. To be clear, don't expect to earn money by launching this type of strategy, okay? Or be patient, patient, patient. What is much more interesting is this. What is this strange thing? Molecule protein. It's a game called Fold It. Fold It, it's one decade ago, an old situation. Um, it's a success story in the world of serious game. The, the situation was that people were researchers, were doing research on the way we fold protein. It could increase different research on different diseases at the same time. They improve, they iterate, and so on. An American foundation decided to do an open innovation process with this complex topic. It's a 3D puzzle game you can play online for free during the evening if you want. Three weeks, 50,000 players, and they found an alternative way to fold the protein. And for the first time, a community of players is considered as the co-author of an academic publication. <laughs> Which means that today, of course, games are great to teach, but maybe games can be used to create a new knowledge. We can expect to do innovation together using games. So let me give you an example of what we are doing now. We take major topics like research against different diseases. So we work, for example, in Paris with COMPAR, Community of Passions for Research. Those patients are willing to do research on their own disease. Okay? But it's complex to do this. So we have decided to create games to empower them to do this. But we were not as experts, the one designing the games. What we have done is we have done a medical game jam. A game jam, which is a competition of video game creation dedicated to the topic of health with students and people suffering from the disease and the expert of the disease together. Within 48 hours, they have produced six games together. Patients, experts, students. 
These games are going to be used by a larger audience, and we expect to accelerate research using these games. So the last question is a bold prediction. My bold prediction about gamification in education, games will become intellectual contribution. Today you can contribute to knowledge by writing books, articles. Tomorrow it will be by creating a game, a serious game. But you're not going to create this alone as an expert. You will co-design it with people like students. We will open this innovation process. To do this, we need dedicated programs, places like playgrounds or game lab or fab lab dedicated to games creation and events. And finally, maybe our mission as teachers is going to change. In game design, we say, from a game. You come for the game. You stay for the guild. I'm pretty sure that tomorrow, as educational leaders, one of our role will be to engage people and learners in education communities. Thank you.